Uh, the last three or four weeks have been for me really, really busy. Uh, we've been just going flat out. And uh, I'm sharing with uh, Jeremy Simpson over at the uh, Cold Street Baptist Church. Uh, I said, told him, you know, when you're the busiest, you got to spend more time with the Lord. And that's for me. Uh, and you know, the Bible talks about things that can bring us down. And I want to read from you from uh, Psalm verses, you know, verse uh, 143. You never think that the psalmist can have depression. He says, come quickly, Lord, and answer me, for my depression deepens me. Even the people way back then suffered with depression. Now, don't turn away from me, or I will die. Let me hear of your unfailing love each morning, for I am trusting you. Show me where to walk, for I give myself to you. Rescue me from my enemies, Lord. I run to I run to you to hide me. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your gracious spirit lead me forward on a firm footing. For the glory of your name, O Lord, preserve my life. Because your uh, faithfulness bring me out of distress, in your unfailing love, silence all my enemies and destroy all my foes, for I am your servant. Today we're going to be having a theme of God meeting us in our deepest needs. And Psalmist there certainly tells us that God meets us in our deepest needs. Someone once said, if you want to get out of depression, praise the Lord. So let us stand together and sing that wonderful little chorus.
Father, we just come to your throne of grace today, being blessed in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's been wonderful to sing these praises unto you, to give our hearts to you anew this Sunday. Lord, worship is a wonderful time for the believer to unite our hearts together in adoration for what Jesus did for us at Calvary. We are mindful, Father, of the upcoming Good Friday service where we gather together with all the churches in the community to celebrate together what unites us. Not what divides us, but what unites us. And we are so grateful for the risen Christ. If you have not risen, our faith would be useless. But you did conquer death once and for all. And so we look forward to having that opportunity to be with the other churches to worship together. We are pray for our other churches in our community who are worshiping you this today. And Lord, we are grateful for each one, knowing that Jesus is proclaimed from every pulpit. Oh Lord, may your word spread within our community. May people be attracted to you. And may they find a home in one of the churches of our community. Thank you for the diversity in Christ. May we celebrate it and not use it to be a divisive item. Lord, we are grateful today for our camp. We always remember to pray for them. Tremendous work they do. And for the need that they have for probably a cook and Mail uh, counselors for the summer. Lord, we pray that you undertake. Somehow these things all seem to work out, but they bring a lot of stress in, in the process. Just help them find the necessary uh, people to fill in the various roles needed at this time. <coughs> pray for our kids who uh, may be at community college or universities and so forth as they come to the end of another year and they need to write their exams and so forth, Lord, we pray that you would be with them, that they would be diligent to the end, and to thank you for each of their faithfulness, bless them as they come to the conclusion of another year. Help them all, as uh, so many young people need jobs, uh, some for just the summer and some for careers now, Lord, undertake help people find the necessary work needed. Pray for uh, missionaries today who serve you. We're grateful for all those who have sacrificed their lives to go and share the glory of Jesus Christ to other people. Lord, as we open the Word of God again this morning, I pray that we would see your love reaching down to us today. That you care so deeply for us, these many years since the resurrection of Jesus and even before. You have great love for us. I just pray, Father, that we would respond to your love as you reach down to us and just want to give you, give us your grace. May we respond in, in true, uh, with a proper fashion and hum, humble spirit grateful for what you did for us at Calvary. Bless the words that are about to be spoken as we look into your word this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, folks, we are going to the Gospel of Mark today, starting a new chapter in, in our series today. And we're going to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. <laughs> And we're beginning at verse 40. It says, And a leper came to Jesus, beseeching him and falling on his knees before him and saying, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Moved with compassion, Jesus, up, out, uh, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing to be cleansed. 
Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. And he sternly warned him and immediately sent him away. And he said to him, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priests and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the news around to such an extent that Jesus could no longer publicly enter a city, but stayed out in unpopulated areas. And they were coming to him from everywhere. I thought for the next little while that we would look through several stories in the Gospel of Mark. And now I'm not promising we will look at every single story uh, and verse, but we will look at several of the stories highlighted in Mark that show us the wonderful Savior that we have indeed. Now just a little bit about Mark might be helpful uh, as we read several stories and it'll help you put context a little bit better together as, as we read it. Mark was probably the first gospel written. Why we have Matthew before Mark has always been a puzzle to me, but Mark was probably the first uh, gospel account. And scholars believe that Matthew and Luke used Mark as a reference book in writing their own book. And of all the verses in Mark, Matthew and Luke uh, use every single verse in Mark except for 31 verses. It's quite remarkable. All the 31 verses are, are mentioned of Mark's gospel. So that's why they think they used him as a reference. And our text today is recorded in Matthew and Luke, both, both uh, books, showing us the importance and significance of this short little story. You know, we have so many stories of Jesus in the Gospel, and this story is, is one of my favorites. Uh, it's one of the first miracles Jesus did. Of course, we know it isn't the first. For me, I think it ranks as one of my favorite stories because I just... I, I just am so moved the fact that Jesus reached out and touched the leper. I think that shows us such incredible love and speaks volumes of the love of God for us. Now Mark was a man of action. Uh, and I think many of us today would like Mark. Now, my mother-in-law, God rest her soul, uh, uh, when she was alive, and uh, she was from BC, and I, of course, had been out there several times to get acquainted with the family, and uh, I remember asking her for directions. Now, let me tell you something about my mother-in-law when it comes to directions. She's going to tell you about every single landmark and building you're going to pass on the way to where you're going to go to, She'll tell you about every tree you're going to pass, and she's going to tell you about every glade of grass that grows along the side of the highway. She just over embellishes it. By the time she gets to the end about how you get there, you forgot because she told you so many things about how to get there. It's just, it was just crazy. And Mark was the guy who would give the readers the Reader's Digest version. He got to the point. One of the distinguishing features of Mark is he constantly uses the word immediately. You tell a story that immediately Jesus went and did something. In our text, he uses that word twice, the word immediately. Mark liked to keep things moving. He liked to keep things moving. He didn't want to bore people with detail. That wasn't his intentions. So keep in mind when you're reading Mark that just because it says immediately such and such does not necessarily mean that it happened immediately. Again, we must be careful not to impose 21st century literacy upon an ancient text. You can't do that. Verse 40 says, And a leper came to Jesus, beseeching him, falling on his knees before him, and saying, if you are willing, you can make me clean. If you are willing, you can make me clean. I'm going to 
talk this morning about five C's. Five C's, so it'll help you remember. First C is the word come. Come. We don't know this man's name. But somehow this man knew Jesus. He either had seen Jesus performing miracles, perhaps at that very moment Jesus was doing other miracles, or perhaps he had heard stories of Jesus performing different miracles. And this man comes to Jesus broken. He's got leprosy. Now, again, be careful not to impose 21st century readings, understandings upon the ancient text. It is widely agreed amongst scholars that it is possible that this man did not have leprosy as we know it in our 21st century. It's possible he did, but it's also possible he didn't. They didn't have medical knowledge to, to the extent that we do today to distinguish one uh, physical feature from another all the time. But the point is he had some kind of a condition that has spread through his body that was also very contagious, making him an outcast in his society. And this man was an outcast. Now lepers, I was surprised to read this this week in my research, lepers were free to live pretty much unhampered anywhere they want. They could live anywhere, but they could not live in Jerusalem, the holy city, or in any city that had been walled from antiquity. I found out this week it is debatable whether these leopards uh, were able to attend uh, synagogue services. I was under the impression that they couldn't, but in fact they could, providing that a curtain was erected to separate them from everybody else but uh, I would suspect that would not be a common occurrence because they already separated the men from the ladies. Uh, and uh, to do a third section, I kind of doubt that happened very often. Uh, me, I have no idea. I have no idea, but the point is, either way, that this man was an outcast. Either way, we were reminded again and again of their condition of their unworthiness to participate with others. Ever been there? Ever felt like you were an outcast or not part of a group? Ever feel like that perhaps you have not been living for the Lord and perhaps even out, you've been outright blatantly singing against the holiness of God as a Christian? You know, there are countless ways in which we can feel unworthy to approach the living God. But what does this unworthy, sick, contagious outcast do? He comes. We have to come to the Father. Our text tells us uh, that he got off his sorry butt and comes to the Lord. That's what it says. Our texts tell us that he fell on his knees. In Luke's account, it says he fell on his face. This man came and worshipped Jesus Christ. He said, I am not worthy, but please heal me. If you are willing, I know you can do it. God loves each of us so much. It's beyond what I could possibly describe. And he wants us to come in our brokenness, in our failures, in our shortcomings. But like this leper, we must come to Jesus Christ. We don't come with our own agendas, we don't come with our own conditions, but we come with humility and humbleness, bowing before the holiness and sovereignty of God. We must come laying aside our rights, laying aside our privileges, and seeing our sinfulness before the Lord, and come on God's terms, and He will heal us. The 
Second C is compassion. The first one was common. Second one is compassion. Verse 41 says, Move with compassion. Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. And he said to him, I am willing to be cleansed. This verse is so powerful to me. An unclean man, separated by society, an outcast even from his family, was touched physically. Folks, we all need the touch of someone else. Whether it be a hug from a stranger, or a nice firm handshake, a tap on the shoulder, a kiss from your spouse, we all need to be touched. We all need human interaction. I am told newborns need to be physically hugged and wrapped because if they aren't, they will die. Now, I've been told that. I'm not sure if that's an old wives' tale or not, but it sure paints a powerful picture for us of the need for human touch. Jesus was moved with such compassion, he reaches out and touches this man. And I can only imagine how this act would have been so profound for this man. I mean, every single one of us here this morning knows Jesus simply could have spoken the words and he would have been healed. He created the universe by his spoken word. What's healing a person uh, for him to do? But Jesus moved with compassion, knew that what this would mean to this man to be touched, to heal him had compassion. And Jesus showed his compassion and love for us by dying at Calvary. He knew we were broken people. He knew we were lost to our own sin and he touches across the time of history to a dying on the cross for our sin. <clears throat> and then the man asked Jesus, if you're willing, to which Jesus replies, I am willing. That willingness is there for you and I today. No matter how broken we may feel inside, no matter how much we feel like we've disappointed the Lord again and again and again, He is willing. Not only is He willing, he can't wait to extend his hand of compassion and love and to touch you and heal you. Jesus came to demonstrate for us how much God loves us. Jesus has compassion for each of us and wants to restore us all. The next C is cleansing. Verse 42 says, Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Now, I just finished telling you not to make too much out of Mark's use of the words immediately. The word immediately. Now, in this case, I checked out Matthew and Luke to see what they had to say about this story. And all three of them used the same word immediately. Here's the thing. When God comes into our lives, He changes us immediately. If we come with sincerity, if we come with humbleness, seeking his forgiveness, he will change you immediately. You will be a different person right away. You will be a new creation in Jesus Christ. When God cleanses us through the power of the blood of Jesus, your slate is wiped clean. <coughs> when God looks upon you, he is now looking through, at you through the lens of Jesus Christ. He sees you perfect and holy because of what Jesus did and you coming in humility to him. Does it mean that we are perfect and holy in reality? Of course not. Of course, I still sin every day of my life, probably. And boy, do I wish I didn't sin. But I do. And Paul lamented, he says, I do the very things that I know I shouldn't do. So it says that in, in Romans. But make no mistake about this, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, this is not true for you. 
You need to do what our first seed was, and that is to come to Jesus Christ. Confess your sins. And only then will you make you a new, and give, only then will he make and cleanse you and give you a new heart. And so Jesus is reaching to each of us today. Today. And if you do not know him, he wants you to come to him humbly like this leper did. Uh, have no strength in himself, no abilities of himself. He came humbly and confessed, his, and confessed our sins to, to Jesus. And in our confession, he will reach out and cleanse you. And it's such a beautiful picture here in Mark. Our next C is Constitution. Verses 43 and 44 says, And he sternly warned them immediately, sent him away, and he said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priests and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded, a testimony to them. When I'm using the word constitution, I'm talking about the constitution of the law of the Old Testament. Jesus didn't come to break the constitution. He didn't come to break the law. Jesus came to fulfill every part of the law. And that meant that this man had to obey the scriptures to go and do the things needed for cleansing. And what are the things for cleansing? Well, we don't have time this morning because we would have to read two very lengthy chapters. But I want to encourage you to go home and see what it says about the cleansing of a leper. Leviticus chapter 13 and 14 talk about what they had to do if they were to be cleansed as a leper. But I want to read one verse to you in Leviticus 13, verse 2. It says, When a man has on the skin of his body a swelling or a scab or a bright spot, and it becomes an infection of leprosy on, on the skin of his body, then he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of his sons the priest, and then they would tell them what they had to do. And you notice, they're describing things that aren't necessarily leprosy. In our culture, in our understanding, in our knowledge of medical things. So that's why I say it could have been much more than leprosy. But that's how they described it back in their day. So let me encourage you to go home and read the Vicos 13 and 14 and put the whole picture together. It's kind of interesting to read. Uh, Jesus required of the man to go and do what the Bible says in Leviticus chapters 13 and 14. You know, when I was uh, living at home as a young man, we lived uh, really close to the Trans-Canada Highway. And the, how would you describe this now? Let's imagine this road was the Trans-Canada Highway. And I lived over here, but I was on this side of the Trans-Canada Highway. Now, in order to get to the other side, there was an underpass way over there. But I was too lazy to go way over there. So, what I did is I would cross the Trans-Canada Highway. Now, you need to understand, to cross the Trans-Canada Highway there required I have to climb a fence, because it was blocking people from crossing. I had to go halfway across, cross a medium, then go the rest of the way and climb over a fence at the other end. Now, today I look back at that event and I remind myself how incredibly stupid I was. <laughs> that was not a wise thing to do. And I, and I don't re recommend anybody doing it, especially since traffic there Oh, it has multiplied so much more. You, you couldn't possibly do what I did back then today. But Jesus never takes shortcuts. <clears throat> Jesus lived by the law. And he was the only person who could live the law to its fullest. The rest of us couldn't possibly keep up with all the rules and regulations of the Old Testament. And that's the beauty of the gospel, isn't it? We don't have to live up to all those rules and do's and don'ts because God knows we can't do it. And if we accept Christ as our Savior, Jesus has fulfilled all those laws for us. 
The gospel is lived out in this short story here in Mark this morning. Jesus' compassion reaches out and touches our lives. He does all the work. We receive his blessing. All we do is confess our sins and come to him. And once we have done that, then we can say, as Paul Harvey says in verse 45, we know the rest of the story. Verse 45 says, and it's the last C, and the last C is confession. Now, when I use the word confession here, I'm not referring to confession of sins. What does the leper do after he receives the healing? Well, let's read it. He says, But he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the news around to such an extent that Jesus could no longer publicly enter a city, but stayed out in unpopulated areas, and they were coming to him from everywhere. You know, I can tell you another childhood story here this morning. When I was young, I was an avid Montreal Canadiens fan. Now I know I'm still a fan today, but believe me, I'm not the avid fan that I once was. Back in the day when you could watch a hockey game only on Wednesday nights or Saturdays, and usually Toronto Maple Leafs took over most of those, so I didn't like that, of course. Uh, and when my Canadians lost the game when I was a young fellow, it felt like my whole day was ruined. It was awful. But when they won, oh boy, I couldn't wait to get to school and discuss it with my friends and how our Habs had beat whomever. That was back in the days when they used to beat people. And I was so excited when they won a game and so were all my friends. And we talked with joy and excitement about how well they played. Jesus said, for those who have forgiven much, much has been forgiven. And this man has been forgiven much. People, we have been forgiven. Some of us may have forgotten. And we need to catch that forgiveness again today. This man went out and he shared. He spread the word. He had confession of what Jesus had done for him. And it spread through the whole, all the cities and stuff. And do you think it can happen again today? I think it can. Why not? Why can't God move the same way he did back then today? It takes us to have a confession something to say for Jesus Christ. He said this man went out and so many people wanted to come and see him that Jesus couldn't even go in the cities anymore. That's a man who had been changed, who had been excited about what Jesus had done for him. And so we must confess to others our love of Jesus Christ out of obedience to our Savior. You know, because his compassion heals our broken spirits. His love reaches down to us. And he wants to cleanse us all. It's interesting at the beginning of this narrative, the man is coming to Jesus, but because of his testimony, at the end, the narrative, our people are coming to Jesus. More and more people are coming from one to who knows how many people are coming out to meet the Savior and be touched by him. And today is our day to come. The Savior. I'm well aware this morning uh, as we sit here that the vast majority of us know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. But some of us may need a little bit of reminding of the goodness and love shared for you at Calvary and how Christ has cleansed your life. We need to be reminded of how He has healed our broken heart. And how he continues to be there for us today. When we have that living and growing in our hearts, we can't help but share it with others. And it shows you how weak we are. It shows us how much we actually fall short of God's holiness. And in God's compassion, he sent Jesus so he can fulfill all the laws and reach out to us and heal our broken hearts. And so this morning, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, will you do as the leper did and come? Come and receive his forgiveness. Come and receive his touch. All you have to do is come humbly, confess your sins, and Jesus will make you a new person. Let's pray. 
Father, what a wonderful story of your wonderful love for us. We can't possibly fathom truly how deeply you care and love us. We can only say thank you and be grateful. Lord, I pray that these words will bless and encourage your people today. In Christ's name, amen. Now, folks, the next song is going to be on the screen as per usual, but it's a brand new song to us. If you're someone who likes to follow the music and it would be help for, helpful for you to sing, it is 568 in the few hymnal. But otherwise, it's, it's a fairly simple song. I think you'll get the hang of it. Let's stand as we sing this together.